Hi everybody, this is Diane. I have a lot of miscellaneous things I want to talk to you about today. Um, one of them being my thought process in designing a journal that would be a shabby looking journal. Kind of a shabby chic, but more shabby than chic, I think. So I want to get into that. And I also wanted to talk about this, which I showed you from my um, estate sale haul. And it's a uh, she used it to hold uh, embroidery floss, but this would be a wonderful way to make a, oh my goodness, ephemera holder. And I, I examined it and I wanted to show you how easy it would be to do. And also I wanted to show you a little tiny haul that I got from Salvation Army. And if I have time, I want to use my new uh, impresslets from my Hobby Lobby haul that you saw yesterday. Um, I think that was yesterday, um, to make some pieces for this, these journals, maybe. And these are the ones I already had. So if I have time, I want to do that. So we better get to it. First of all, let's go over this. So after I did the video showing this, I examined it more closely and realized that this is a placemat, just a fabric placemat. So the edges are already finished. And I went to the Salvation Army yesterday to drop some things off, and I looked for a placemat, because I often see fabric placemats. They are quilted ones, usually. Of course, they didn't have any when I wanted one. But I will keep my eyes open. So what, how this was created was, she took uh, grosgrain ribbon, could be any kind of ribbon, but the grosgrain, I like that better than a satin ribbon for this project. And it is probably about seven eighths of an inch wide. And she just looped it here and here and probably stitched it down. Well, maybe not. Maybe it's glued. But sewed it on the, as the handles and then sewed a length of it to cover the ends of the, the ribbon. So that's a very easy way to put the handles on. And the inside is probably just as easy. It might be a little fussier because you take your bags that you want to use and line them up with a, just a portion of the bottom of the bag in the middle. So it will be under this ribbon. And line them up the way you want them and then sew this ribbon around it. And that catches these in. And the ends of the bags are hidden. So if I can... These bags are... You know, they're old and kind of dingy, but they weren't used for food. They were used for embroidery floss, so they're fine. But if I could find a placemat on sale or at the thrift store, I could make one or two of these for myself with new bags. So I just wanted to show that to you. Then, of course, um, while I was in there looking for a placemat, I also checked out the other things. And I just got a couple of things, four items. This is not for junk journals, obviously. But I, <laughs> when I was a kid, my mom had these, and they either held peanut butter or jelly when they were purchased, and then they were little dessert dishes. And we had a whole set of them. There were eight of us in my family, six children, two parents. So I don't know how many of these she actually had. We just took them for granted. They were in our cupboard, and we ate out of them. But what I remember them being used for was pudding the kind of pudding that you cook on the stove, uh, royal, to be precise, <laughs> royal pudding. And um, so this is what I associate these, these with, is the warm pudding. So my sister got a whole set of them at uh, an auction a few uh, years ago. And I could have gotten a set of them, but they were in a big box with lots of other glassware, and the, the vendor did not want to pick things out of it. He wouldn't he did not want anybody to separate the stuff, so I didn't want the whole box. But anyway, I saw this one lone dish at the Salvation Army, and I bought it. It's got a, liney, a tiny little chip right here. But I made pudding last night. <laughs> I had to wash this so I could do the video. This works. It holds pudding. All right. And then I got this apron, which is not very vintage, I don't think. But I like the gingham. It's a nice, sturdy fabric here. And I like the print. So obviously it's a sewing pattern. So, I mean, a sewing design. It's got the 
dress form and the sewing machine and some yarn and knitting needles. So those pieces will be great to use in a journal. And oh by the way this was marked 49 cents but it, it was a green label and the green labels were half price so I paid 25 cents for it. This book is Bermuda's Botanical Wonderland and it has I think this the the books hardcover books are $1.99 there and I did pay that because it's got um, illustrations in it. And I imagine I'll just put this book in my shop. But I thought you guys would want it. Those of you who love to do botanicals. And then I just picked up this drawing pad. Looks like it's pretty full. Might be missing some pages, but not many. It says, uh, well, I don't know how many pages are in it. I guess it doesn't matter. It's just a nice drawing paper. Okay. Now, about these books. I have a bunch of wallpaper digitals that I had already printed. Most of them are from Lorna Taylor's um, Taylor Made Journal, Taylor Made Journals Etsy store. Some are mine that from wallpaper that I own, and I don't think I used any of Amity Bloom's, but so most of them are Lorna's. And I wanted, I've been wanting to use this paper from Blue Fern Studio, which is, um, I think it's called Tattered Walls, and it looks like wallpaper peeling, so I thought the wallpaper digitals would be good for these. Now, I've had this for a while, this set, and I ordered it online. It is extremely heavy paper. <clears throat> it's too heavy to use as pages in a journal. So I decided to make six one signature journals and I can use six of the pages um, as the covers. And there were two of each design. So I will take the second page of each des of these designs and I will use them for making tags and other ephemera. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I wanted to tell you, talk to you about the shabby look, uh, especially with these colors. So I'm, I'm choosing colors like accents. Most of the pages are going to be neutral. These are pages, and they're all neutral, except for the wallpaper <coughs> digitals. And, um, well, this one's neutral too, but I have some handmade paper in them, and some of the handmade papers are colored. So the, the little bits of color are coming from trims, the wallpapers, um, the handmade paper, and maybe some other kind of embellishments. Because I wanted it to be more neutral. And I want it to look shabby. So it will have coffee dyeing, well, coffee dyed page and vintage stuff. There's quite a bit of vintage stuff. And linens, um, there will be some hand homemade ephemera and lots of uh, fabric pieces and tabs and anyway I've got this one pretty much the way I want each book to go and so now I'm going to start working on them together so I was working on cutting the pages here and uh, those two and the, I did select the colors of, dig of wallpaper digis that I wanted to go with each cover and get them in there. So they'll have four of these pages. I have not trimmed and folded them yet because I want to print on the backs. So I'll be doing that today, I hope. So you'll see a little bit more about the shabbiness as I work on putting these together. Some A couple of people wanted to know how I would make ruffles with my chiffon type of fabrics or like this or um, the little tool that I have. So here's an example of how I put um, a piece of chiffon and on as a ruffle. So I do want to do a video showing the different ways that you can make ruffles with these fabrics. 
and uh, hopefully that will be my next video. I had to get all these things prepped before I could make that video because I would want to show it as I make the book. Although uh, I don't think I'll be using the tool in here and I will make some ruffles out of tool in the video. So I like, there's another one, I like uh, the way this particular book looks. I hope I can do justice to the other uh, books that I'll be making. And I'm not going to talk too much more about all of these elements that are going in the book. Um, I do want to make some of those impresslets. Um, I will be making lots of tags and collage cards and things, so I had made these. I just took some ready-made tags and put some book page on it, on the tag, inked around it, just added a piece of fabric. These are not pockets, they're sewn all the way around. And then added some lace or crochet and some buttons or something like that to the top. So I have more than I need for these journals, but I had these journals in mind when I made them. So I'll just show them to you. I love this fabric. Uh, the piece of fabric that I have has some large, colorful birds on it, but I just wanted the neutral part. The birds were too big. I'll use them for something else. This is from a vintage piece of linen, as is this. Just a twill fabric. Love that button. And I use quite a few vintage sheets. I love the lemon, lemon yellow button here. It's another sheet and another sheet linen and a sheet love those blues so I got quite a few done some of those will go in my stash <clears throat> let's pull my big shot over here and I like to use the impresslets on handmade paper I don't know if this is too thick this paper is too thick, but we're going to try it. First, I'll do it on... Okay. I'm going to try it on this one. And I want to use one of my new ones. Let's do the heart. Boy, the wind's blowing out there. I didn't know it was going to be a windy day. Yesterday was like spring but it's going to be cold and wintry and probably a little snowy um, this weekend again by the end of the week. It is Tuesday right now. Boy, I think I wasn't that interested in the shamrock part of this, but since this is green, I'm going to make a shamrock too. I might use that in something. And it's a little hard to adjust your sandwich they call when you layer all of your layers before you put it through a sandwich. But I think I took both tabs off the plate because these are very thick. I don't think I need the the extra layers. And I'll put my plate on it, my cutting plate. And oh wait, I think I did end up was with something else. I used my new embossing folder yesterday to make a tag. I'll show you that one when I'm done here. But uh, this one is, these are thicker than those embossing folders. I, I put a shim on. It's just two thin pieces of card cardstock, but it, it's enough to add a little extra pressure. So I've got my cutting plate and then these two little pieces of cardstock. I just keep the, this is polished smooth because it's been through this so many times. Let's try it. Okay, I do feel pressure, so maybe it's enough, but with the 3Ds, you have to go through it at least three times. That's two. And then just to bring it back out my side, it'll go through four times. And let's see how it looks. So it cuts the piece and embosses it. That's beautiful.
beautiful. Love that. For these journals that I'm making, I really like my medallions. I have two round and two oval, and I like my flourish too. So I, I really enjoy these, and when Tim said that they weren't going to be making impresslets anymore, I think you can still maybe still get these on Amazon. Look for impresslet medallions and impresslet flourish. Um, I think what I did was I got these all in one set together from Amazon. I was looking for the medallion, but, and then this came up. Um, and these are still in the stores. I got these at Hobby Lobby, and they're not on clearance. I got them. They were all 40% off this week, which is why I got them, and the leaves, too. But um, you can probably get these online also, but I found mine at Hobby Lobby. But they're not going to make any more impresslets. And look at them. They are so fun. Fun, fun e ephemera. I just want to have a session making a whole bunch of these to have in my stash. Let's try this one. This one is a little bit heavier. Um, I want to make a medallion with it. Let's do a round one. I might be able to get them both on there. butterfly stamped on that piece. Should have had it turned the other way. That's okay. Butterflies are nice. Aren't they pretty? Oh, I love them. Let's do more. Speaking of the weather, like I was talking about the wind, right? Um, my daughter and I went to the craft stores Saturday and on our way we were on the highway and our both of our phones went off with an alert and she was driving I looked at my phone and read it to her that it was warnings of snow squalls which would be dangerous for driving and um, very low visibility and and might even have might even go into ice on the roads because the temperature was dropping very quickly. But it didn't say what area the snow squalls were going to be in. So, you know, we read the warning and there, there was lots of traffic because it was Saturday. And then we could see ahead of us how gray the sky was and the mountains were looking like there was snow. The, the hills that we were headed toward. And it didn't take long, and we were in the snow, driving in the snow, and I love that. These are so great. I think I've only made these with handmade paper, so I better try making them with other kinds of paper, but I just love them like this. Um, and it happened very, very quickly. That's why it's called a squall. It's just, it comes fast. It doesn't last terribly long. Um, but we, she put on, the headlights were already on, and she put on the hazard lights, and all the cars, other cars, were putting on their hazard lights. And all of a sudden, she, we couldn't see the car ahead of us or behind us. We, we saw no lights whatsoever. And she decided it was time to pull off the road. Nobody else did, at least not right where we were. But that was dangerous, too, because 
she pulled off the road as far as she could get in case somebody else wanted to pull off right where we were and couldn't see that there was already a car there. It's kind of scary. So we pulled off. We saw other cars going by. Whoops, I forgot my... Um, what did I call these? And I could definitely feel the difference. It was going through too easily. Anyway, um, we sat there for 10 or 15 minutes before it was the visibility was good enough for, for her to feel comfortable to get back on the road. And everybody was talking about it when we went to we went to uh, Raymore and Flanagan on our way to our craft stores because I needed a new mattress and I'd been putting it off for far too long. So we stopped there and the girl that was waiting on us was talking about the snow squall. I guess she got caught in it too. And then there were lots of pictures on Facebook of people with their photos of the snow squall. Most of them were at home. But it was exciting. <laughs> If you like that sort of thing. I love weather. You might know because I'm, I talk about it when it's raining or windy. I love rain and wind. I especially love thunderstorms. Um, and I like snow. But it has been so cold and windy here. I Even I am ready for spring. <laughs> So it felt like spring yesterday, which was nice. Today is heading to 60 degrees also, but the next day it's gonna start getting cold again. That's enough talk about weather. Aren't these pretty? I'm loving these. Let's do some flourish now. This is quite thin paper, actually. It looks thick, but it's not. This one wasn't quite big enough to do both, but I can use this in a collage and have something over it. I want to do the flourish. back out toward me. Alright, I have this paper. I think that would make a pretty flourish. This is thicker, but it looks like it turned out pretty good if I can get it out. You get the idea of how beautiful these impresslets are. They are made by Sizzix. Sizzix 3D impresslets, if you wanted to look for them. I'll make some more of them later, but I think you've seen me working on them long enough. got this brown. I'm going to try the leaves. I just want to try the leaves. I think I need to try them all, don't you?
I'll just have to do the little leaf. It's not big enough for the big one. I want it to be that way, I think. The side facing the metal, no, the side facing this will have the best impression, I believe. Is that right? Let me see something. I don't, I don't know which. I think I put them down this way, and I had the butterfly facing down. So, yes, I want this facing down, I think. Very detailed. Can you see all of the veining on that? Very detailed. That is beautiful. So I will be making my own ephemera with those. So I'm going to, I guess I will talk a little about pages and things that are going in these journals. And I will, at some point, I will find places to put some of these into the journals. Because I think these go very well with this style. So let's take a look at what I have in this one, since this one is pretty much completed. Um... I don't know how I'm going to decorate each cover. Each one is going to be different. This one has a big empty space right here. This one is full of flowers. So I might put something down here. Um, this one is pretty much all over, so I could put something there. So it just depends on the cover. But I thought about this one, and I found this that's been in my stash. I have this one and um, I think a square one. I'll just show you. I brought some of my 3D stuff in here. I've got labels, different types of labels, um, them, some slide mounts that I put. Um, this is embossing powder and this is alcohol ink. There's another of the white frames and just some 3D embellishments. So I don't know what I'm going to use, but I brought these in here. I took a piece of embossed cardstock and just traced it to fit and, and cut it out to fit in that window. Just rubbed a little bit of Tim Holtz ink on there and it can go there. But I felt like it needed something else. So I found this in my stash of doilies and stuff and I think it's just about perfect for that. So I'm going to glue this down on the cover and I will have um, seam binding or sari silk to tie around it. Um, I added this because it's got the red, the deep red rose to match this color and had this little scrap of lace uh, eyelet on my table. So I just glued that down. I wanted to lighten up the dark background. I'm not sure what I will do to the back. I don't know if I want to add pockets at all to the covers because there's so much in this. But this is a piece of um, a vintage billhead paper. And um, so I'm, I'm adding lots of eyelets as tabs, eyelet laces as tabs. And I was inspired for this journal by, I think it's um, Paper Daisy Journals. She's from Australia. Um, so I, I uh, saw one of her videos and thought this would that would be 
She had some great ideas for the shabby journals that I had in mind for this paper. And um, so I used a lot of her things, like like this, adding this little bow to the eyelet, you know. Um, I was going to say something else, but I forgot what it was. Anyway, so this page has uh, just a scrap paper that I thought looked beautiful with the shabby chic look. And I wanted to use up some of my um, digitals that I've printed. So the digital wallpaper and digital ephemera. So I pulled some pieces that I thought in different sizes that I thought would go well with uh, the, the look. And this is one of them, and I'll add something to the back of it to make it a little sturdier. And this is a piece of sheer embroidered, I don't know, I think it was a dresser scarf type of thing. And I put it on as a pocket. And I do have a set of ephemera pieces. I forgot what it's called, but it has this um, different kind of a look to it. Like it's got very, very pale, thin layer of gesso or something over it. And I love it. And this, these are from Eclectic Eggplant. And I thought these were perfect for this look that I'm going for. So I'm using, whenever I can use one of those, I do. And it goes, this goes in this pocket. It adds a little bit of color. And then one of the envelopes, um, the notes that was written from the Netherlands in 19, what is this one? I can't read the date. It looks like 77, but I know these are older than that, so I think it's 47. It's either that or 57. Let me see. Yep, it's 57 on the postmark. So it's one of those letters that they would write and then fold up. I folded it the, wrong, the other way so it would be a page, but um, that's just going to be a page. I didn't do anything to that. This is from... A record book. They look like ledger books, the covers of them, but they don't have ledger. They have lined paper, but they have numbers. <clears throat> and I just put lace edging on them. And I'll be making more tag ephemera. So I'll have, I have these that I made. And I didn't even put one of them in here. So I'll have to find a place for one. But this one is a smaller tag that I covered in fabric. I also have a very large stash of these tags that I made with my Cricut because I was going to use them for um, the Tags Handmade Challenge last year and doing one every week with uh, embroidery on it, slow stitching. So I made a whole, like, 50, 52 tags. And I decided not very early not to do that challenge because I just had enough to do. So I have all these to use. And I glued this on, and then I had to trim around that, but it wasn't that bad. I used fabric scissors to trim around it and added a little scrap of cardstock and an eyelet, and it just makes a cute, simple tag. This is a vintage pocket, uh, envelope here, and this it was glued into a scrapbook, and this was written on the scrapbook page. Um, contained letter from orchestra leader Xavier Cugat, Cugat's secretary. And I thought that was interesting. If I don't, I don't really know anything about Xavier Cugat, but I've heard of him, and um, so I thought it was interesting to glue that on there. There's another one of those ephemera pieces that looks like gessoed, and this is a tag that I covered with wallpaper. Love that bird on it. This is one of the digital wallpapers. So you can see on the backs of these wallpapers, I looked through all of, tail of uh, Lorna's two kits of wallpaper that I have. And there's a lot of pages in each kit, and I looked for ones that had a lighter print to them so that they could be journaled on, and I printed them on the backs. So that's why I haven't cut these yet, because I want to print something on the backs of them. I used music paper and some more eyelet. Uh, I folded this up to make little pockets. Unfortunately, I already cut all the music pages for the other books, and I forgot to, to uh, leave them long enough to fold up. So I don't know if I'm going to just you save them for something else and get more paper out and do this, or just not. But this is a tag I had in my stash already. Just a piece of embroidery. 
And um, I liked how, um, I forgot her name from Paper Daisy Journals, but I liked how she would take a piece of lace and wrap it around to the other side. So you get a bit there. And here she took this fabric to make a pocket and wrapped it here. I left this open at the top so I could put maybe a skinny tag in there or you could, whichever. This is one of the collage tags that I'll be making. I just made one on some a scrap of coffee dyed paper to use some of that book page. And this is from, do I have it here? Yeah, this document that was all rolled up. Um, it's an estate document and it's pretty creased because it was rolled up and it was in a box of stuff. But there's lots of pages to it and I thought it was about time I started using it. So I used it as a page in each journal. This one is uh, one of the thicker pages and then the inner pages are all like kind of like rice paper or trace um, piping paper. This says eight grain bags at 50 cents or five cents, um, so it's 40 cents. One adds, 25 cents. One bushel basket, five cents. I wonder what the year is for this. That's really cheap. I have to look for a year. 1914, wow. So it's just a list of their estate. We know everything in it. There was page after page after page. One brown mare, five years old, $100. One bay mare, seven years old, $150. I wonder why one that's two years older would be $50 more. A dung fork, a stable scraper, different kinds of hooks, a buggy. That's really cool. Um, another page from that record book. This one has some eyelet and some trim and a pretty button on it. And I used another one of those fake gessoed um, ephemera pieces here as a pocket. This is handmade paper and just ruffled some chiffon fabric there. Well, there's lots of beautiful shabby chic kind of elements in this in these journals. This is just a piece of printed cardstock like that and I collage some vintage ledger pages with old writing on them, a little piece of lace, a digital, and a little scrap of wallpaper. And a vintage, uh, uh, it is a vintage photo but it's a digital. I have this one in my collection but I printed it from that and another tag with wallpaper on it. This one is pretty um, colorful. It matches the colors here. And this is from a vintage book about furniture. Just put it on as a little pocket. And I had this little cluster on my desk, so I added that to it. Here is the tag I made with my new embossing folder that I just got at Hobby Lobby. And this is like kind of like a handmade paper and I put coffee dyed paper on the back so you could write on it because it was very textured. And I had a little scrap of vintage ledger and I just made a little reinforcement there. This I just clipped on. And there's a, just a little cluster here, fabric cluster with a button on a bulb, bulb pin. I might end up gluing that down because it just wants to flop and fold because of the weight of the bulb pin with the button. So I think I'll just glue it down so it'll just lay there. Love that wallpaper. Some fabric and a digital tag. I have all kinds of tags. I have fabric, partially fabric covered tags, some digital tags, some collaged uh, wallpaper tags, uh, collage tags and wallpaper tags. So lots of different ways of making tags. Again, this fabric wraps around and it's a little tuck spot there. I included this booklet. This was in my stash of pre-made ephemera, ephemera that I made. I think I'm going to have to 
um, redo my paper pages for the other journals so that I can have a little tuck spot there. I think this is going to be very fit for sewing through when I sew these together. So there's that. And that's all I have done. So I guess my next step would be to print on the backs of all of these pages and then assemble all my pages and decorate them. I didn't look to see where I could put some of these. I could just decorate my vintage letter with one. That would be pretty, wouldn't it? Let's do that. Let's just glue one on there right now. This book is the one that has the red tone, so I'm going to use this pinkish rose color. kind of goes with that right there. Maybe my next video will be making the ruffles with the tool and the chiffon. I like that. That looks good. Can we do one more? I think we should do one more on the back half of the signature. Look at this medallion here. It kind of mimics the medallions. I don't know. I'll figure it out. I'll find a place to put one. Some of those things I tried were fine. Maybe I'll just put one there. Kind of like that green on the rose. And I'm going to say thank you for watching and I hope you'll come back to see more work being done on these journals and uh, I hope you have a creative day today. I'll see you soon. Bye bye.